Good evening, YouTube. Once again, fellow YouTubers, I'm back uh, on this evening. Uh, kind of the late evening, actually. Um, to do another album review, and I'm going to, before I get into what band, or what album this is, I would like to let everyone know something really cool I found out um, a few days ago um, that two of my very favorite bands, Blue Oyster Cult and Kansas, are going to be playing a show, they're going to be playing a concert in Houston, May 31st, the very end of May, they're playing a concert. And I haven't seen either band live, and I've been wanting to see, you know, both of these bands. And my fantasy concert was to see Blue Oyster Cult with Kansas, and it's finally happening. They're going to be playing at the Arena Theater in Houston, May 31st, the last day of May, last day of Pompeii. No. Um, so basically what I'm doing to get myself pumped up for the show is I'm going to be doing some more Kansas and Blue Oyster Cult album reviews. Um, and I'll be doing some more. And there aren't very many Blue Oyster Cult or Kansas album reviews on YouTube. Basically there's only two people who have done Kansas reviews that I can find anyway. Uh, myself, I've done Freaks of Nature. That was the first one I've done. And so far the only one I've done. And Cool Dude Bailey, this username Cool Dude Bailey, who's a huge Kansas fan and a huge classic rock fan, did uh, the debut album, Kansas. And check his out. Um, look, just type in, the way I found it was Kansas album review. His was the first one that popped up. So check his review out if you're real into Kansas and you're real into album reviews. You want to hear what other people's opinions of the music, how it affected them. So I'm doing another album review today, or tonight, evening. I'm going to be doing this album, check this one out, Audio Visions by Kansas. This album was the first Kansas album that I got. Uh, I was looking for a Kansas CD at this local pretty famous record store here in Austin called Waterloo Records. I found this for four bucks used. and. Didn't know any of these songs, I don't think, until I bought it, but this is my review of the Audio Visions album. Uh, this came out in 1980. This was the beginning of the new decade, or the, a new decade for uh, <laughs> Kansas. Um, this album marks an end of a chapter because this is the last album Kansas did with the original lineup, uh, consisting of Phil Ehart on drums. Rich Williams on guitar, Kerry Livgreen, uh, guitar, keyboards, organs, um, Steve Walsh, keyboards and vocals, Robbie Steinhardt on violin and viola, and Dave Hope on bass. And this was their 1980s offering, uh, and the album definitely it starts off with the first song is relentless and it starts off really rocking this is a real kind of kick you in the gut song really like this one it's one that Steve Walsh does he sings this one it's a really good rocker it opens up really great I love the way it opens up um, and that there's harmonies with you know uh, Walsh and Steinhardt and I believe Liv Green just harmonizing and the harmonies sound great that's one thing I need to comment about Kansas is that their harmonies are so amazingly great the way they sound together. They just sound awesome. They just really, they they have this way of harmonizing that sounds really amazing. So Relentless is the first one, and that's a great, great rocker. Uh, really recommend that one. And then it goes into number two, which is Anything For You. It starts off with Steve Walsh on piano. And then like a little guitar thing from Carrie Livgreen. And this song's okay. It's... It's not a bad song, but it doesn't really hit me like some of these other ones do. Um, but Anything For You is song number two. And it's it's a pretty good song, I guess, after the first one. It flows really well. But this one's not really a standout for me. Uh, we get to number three, which was the single for this album, the hit, uh, Hold On. This is a amazing song. This is just perfect. It starts off kind of like with the with the drums, guitar, the violin, everything Robbie Steinhardt's playing. The violin is great. And then it's, it's a real slow song, but it's it's just perfect. 
And I love the chorus. I love the lyrics of it. I love the vocal delivery. It's easy to see why this was a hit for them and why this was, I believe, the first single. This was a really good, smart move for the first single. Hold on. I find myself singing this where I'm driving or, you know, by myself in the shower or whatever. I love Hold On. Hold On is a great, great Kansas piece. This is one of the best songs they've ever written. I love Hold On. Number four, we get into Loner. Loner, this is another rocker. And Robbie Steinhardt sings this one. This is one that Robbie sings. And uh, it's real kind of like... I don't want to say toe tapping, but you could really get into this. It's real grooving, and you know, the chorus is really good. I love Robbie's voice on the chorus. His, his voice is so great on the chorus, and he's harmonizing with Walsh and Liv Green, and I guess the other guys. But this is this is one of the standouts. This is a great, great Kansas song. I love Loner. This one's really good. Uh, and number five is Curtain of Iron. Uh, Curtain of Iron. Is uh, is really good. This is this is kind of their one of the progressive ones out here, I believe. Where it starts off, but it gets kind of slow, and it's kind of builds up. It's got kind of this bold sound to it, which I really like. Curtain of Iron is one of the longest ones here. It's a six-minute song. This one's a really good one. This one is one of the standouts on uh, Audio Visions. Uh, I think this is also a fan favorite from uh, Kansas as well. Now, it goes on to that with Got to Rock On. This is like good grooving, like was it 2-4 time or whatever with the drums, I don't know. I'm a drummer, I should know this, but no. The groove to this, the beat of the song is really good, I really like this. This is really like a head bobbing song. Which is what I wanted to mention with Loner. Loner was head bobbing. That's what I wanted to say. But uh, Got to Rock On is really good. You can it's, you, it's a really good feel good vibe to this. Um, really like this one. This is another great standout to Audio Visions. And and this album is, is it's got so many great gems on it. This is really a, a spectacular album. This is one of Kansas's best as far as I was, I'm concerned. I, I absolutely love this album. Don't open your eyes. Man is next. Number seven. This is one big, great piece of work. It starts off with this violin that, well, actually it starts off with the piano and uh, and then the drums. And then when the drums kick in, Robbie's playing this violin part that's... That violin just hits me every time. I love his violin playing on this. This is a great song. This is one of the reasons why this makes this an essential album. This is very much an essential album for Kansas. If you are wanting to start a Kansas collection, you've got to have this album in your collection. I'm, I'm totally getting ahead of myself. I haven't even gone through the whole album yet. I'm telling you, this is one of the best Kansas albums ever. Um, don't open your eyes. But after that, it it takes a total tempo change and gets real fast. Kind of a, has a big, kind of fast part of it. This was another single from the album. Really like this this album, or this song. Don't Open Your Eyes is really good. Uh, no One Together is another one. I believe Robbie Steinhardt sings this one. Sounds like him anyway. Um, and this is a, kind of like a, like the piano. Is, it's real upbeat, kind of happy sounding. Sounds happy to me. It's just another feel-good rocker. It's a really good upbeat pop rocker. really like this one. No One Together is, is, is another really great song. I like this. Um... And, and and so and this album really flows really well. I mean, all these songs were like in the right order. Uh, but yeah, No One Together is definitely a good. As you can sing along to it. To I love the harmonies, the chorus for it. All the musicianship is great. The guitar I like in it. And number nine, we get to No Room for a Stranger, which is a slower kind of a. Kind of has sort of a sinister sound to it, which I really like. And Steve Walsh sings this one. This one's really good. Um, but yeah, No Room for a Stranger. I'd say look this one up on YouTube. Check this one out. I like this one a lot. Uh, that's a really good one. That's It's got this... Kind of groove to it. It's a really nice grooving song. It's 
definitely a groove rocker, which is, which is, it just sounds excellent. This is an excellent song. And then the album closes with Back Door, which is a real kind of mellower piece with piano by Steve Walsh, and then there's harmonies and a lot of great harmonies on this album all, all, all the way through it. Um, and, uh, you know, it's kind of slower. This one's really, I'd say, the weakest song on the album. This one I really could never get into. It's uh, the last song. It's not really what I would call a bad song. There's nothing horrible on here. In fact, there's some stuff on here that's just phenomenal, I think. But this song is just... It's just filler to me. It's just backdoor. Some people like it. I just never really got into this one. It's okay. But that closes the album. And that's Audio Visions by Kansas. And I don't know if you can see the price tag, but... I left it on there because I was too lazy to take it off. Got it for three ninety nine. That's about what is that four thirty two with tax. Really cool cover art. This has got a really great album cover. Check this out. I always thought this looked pretty cool on the back. The real uh, psycho looking guy sweating. He's got a record player. It kind of looks Frank Zappa ish a little bit, but really like that artwork as well. But yeah, it's cool. Everything's there. Like the Kansas logo is there, the famous logo, and this is a pretty cool piece of art. You know, I like that. Uh, women for headphones. I don't know. I'm get. I'm rambling. But that's my opinion of Audio Visions. We're gonna have to grade this. Um, it's time for a grade. I'm gonna give this album. I'd say an A minus. While I do love this album, there's a lot of really great. Um, songs on this. There's a few uh, flubs to it or some bumps in the road, whatever you want to call it. Uh, like I said, there's a couple of filler songs. I'm not really into anything for you or Backdoor. But another thing is the production I think isn't up to par as it is on other Kansas albums. Um, you know, some of Carrie Livgreen's playing on here is amazing. And the, the vocals sound great on here. The drums are really good. Um, but Dave Hope, the problem is, the bass wasn't mixed very well. It, it, he's mixed way back in the, in, in the mix, and I can't hear what he's playing. So, you know, and I want to, because I, I know that Dave Hope is a great, great bass player. I know he's an amazing bass player, but you would never know it by listening to this album, because you can't really hear him. The bass is way too far back, and, uh... That takes some points away from me because I want to hear all the instruments. I can hear everything else, but it's like I have to strain to hear the bass, and I can't really hear what Dave is doing on this. And I'd like to know what his ideas were. I'd like to know, I'd like to hear how great the bass player he is, and I just can't do it with this album. So that that takes a little bit of points off. But is this an essential Kansas album? Definitely. And as I said, this. This marks an end of chapter one of Kansas's life because after this, we had some changes. Well, we didn't. They did. I don't know why I said we, but there were some changes in the band. Steve leaves. Um, him and Carrie weren't getting along too well. They enter John Elefante. John Elefante is the new singer, keyboardist for Kansas, and he's with them for a while. So that's like the second chapter of Kansas. So this is a very important record, as this is the last Kansas album with the original lineup, with the original six men lineup. But this is definitely essential. Um, I would definitely say this is actually a pretty good starting place. This is, oh, I mean, for me it was. This is my first Kansas album. I love this album. Um, I mean, this, I would not want, I would not, not want to have this album in my collection. Uh, this is a great Kansas record. Um... I believe this is a fan favorite for a lot of Kansas fans, but I think it really ends the the lineup of this band really well. I think they really went on, off on a really great album. Uh, but definitely recommend this. Uh, I know you could. I know there's some videos where you can hear the whole thing in its entirety on YouTube. If you don't want to do that, you can listen to all the songs individually. I know they're all on here, on YouTube. So I definitely would check out songs. I mean, totally check out Hold On. I mean, that's a great, great hit single. That's a great song. 
I mean, a lot of people have already heard that because it is a hit, but if you haven't, check out Hold On. Definitely check out Relentless. Relentless is amazing. Curtain of Iron, to me, is epic. And Loner, you know. Loner is great, too. So I've given you four really good ones to check out. So, there you go. That's my opinion. That's my review of Kansas Audio Visions. It gets an A-. minus, And, um, yeah. There you go. I'm going to be having some more Kansas uh, reviews and some, hopefully some more Blue Oyster Cult reviews to get pumped up for the show. And then also, after the show, which is basically three months away, it's not till May 31st, I will do a review on the show and let you know how I felt about the show, how it impacted me. Really excited. I've never seen either band, but I've heard from various people how great both bands are live. And this is a big fantasy concert. It's like what you would call a wet dream. Kansas, Blue Oyster Cult. One show together. Alright, thanks for watching the video. Be on the lookout for some more reviews. Some more Kansas. Some more BOC. are coming right at you. Alright, good night everybody. Rock on. Got to rock on.